Behind me is the Great Hall of the People, which has many smaller halls representing different provinces of China. It has a 10,000-seat auditorium for all the delegates of the Communist Party of China. Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh will meet his Chinese counterpart, Li Qiang, in the Great Hall of the People. And also a banquet will be hosted later by President Xi Jinping at the same premises. Well, the Great Hall is one of the biggest auditoriums in the world and is a great symbol of the People's Republic of China. To further cement relations between the two neighbors, Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh landed at the VIP area of Beijing International Airport. He was received by the Chinese Vice Foreign Minister, Chai Chun. The next day, Dr. Manmohan Singh was given a ceremonial reception outside the Great Hall of the People. He was received by his Chinese counterpart, Li Keqiang. And after a formal introduction to the delegation accompanying each Prime Minister, Premier Li then escorted Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh as he inspected a Tri-Services Guard of Honor. The two leaders then proceeded to the Great Hall of the People for delegation-level talks. The CEOs then looked for ways to deepen trade and business links. The India delegation was led by Anil Dhirubhai Ambani Group Chairman Anil Ambani. At the delegation-level talks, Premier Lee complimented India for successfully saving thousands of lives by its timely evacuation and effective handling of Cyclone Thailin. He particularly thanked India for saving the lives of seven Chinese sailors who were trapped in the storm in the Bay of Bengal. The talks lasted longer than their scheduled one hour, indicating their seriousness and wide-ranging agenda. After the talks, the two sides signed four agreements and five memoranda of understanding in various fields, adding to the strategic depth in their relationship. Premier Lee acknowledged the role played by Dr. Manmohan Singh in India's economic and social progress and in strengthening the India-China strategic relationship. I'd like to appreciate the progress made by the Indian government and people over the last decade uh, under the premiership of uh, His Excellency. And also, I'd like to appreciate the high level of attention and the efforts of the Prime Minister to the China-India relationship. One of the highlights of the visit was progress on the border question, taking forward a series of agreements since 1993 on maintaining peace and tranquility on the border including one in April 2005 to implement confidence-building measures in the military field along the LAC, the two sides signed on this visit the Border Defense Cooperation Agreement. Signed by Defense Secretary R.K. Mathur and Deputy Chief of the People's Liberation Army, Lieutenant General Sun Jiangua, it defines meeting mechanisms of border and defense personnel to exchange information about military exercises, aircraft, demolition operations, unmarked mines to maintain peace, stability and tranquility along the LAC and the Indochina border. It also commits each side to exercise maximum restraint in case all other mechanisms to maintain peace fail. Premier Li and I have agreed that peace and tranquility on our borders must remain the foundation for growth in the India-China relationship. Even as we move forward, the negotiations toward a fair, reasonable, and mutually acceptable settlement to the India-China boundary question. This will be our strategic benchmark. The agreement on border defense cooperation that we have just signed will add to the existing instruments to ensure peace, stability, and predictability on our borders. Now the military dimension, the three important points. One is to formalize an understanding we had that we should not be following or tailing patrols of the other side, particularly in areas where there's no common understanding of the line of actual control. Uh, the other is that when we encounter situations, what we call doubtful situations, then each side has the right to seek clarification from the other side. Uh, and uh, the third is that when, despite one and two, uh, if you actually have face-to-face -face, uh, situations uh, in areas where there's no common understanding of the line of actual control, then there is a commitment 
uh, that both sides would exercise maximum self-restraint. The second was an MOU on Nalanda University signed by Foreign Secretary Sujata Singh and the Chinese Ambassador to India, Wai Wai. The third was an MOU to strengthen cooperation on transborder rivers signed by Indian Ambassador to China, Dr. Jai Shankar and China's Minister for Water Resources, Chen Lie. This agreement recognized the asset value of rivers to all riparian countries the existing mechanism that shares hydrological data will now be used to discuss emergency management like floods and other issues of mutual interest. Now what this MOU does is, it, it has three important points. One is that, it, first of all, it recognizes the transborder rivers, related natural resources and the environment are of uh, value to all riparian countries. The second is, uh, in terms of data, hydrological data, the period for which we get data has been expanded. Uh, and the third is that uh, the Chinese uh, side and we have reached an agreement that we would exchange views on other issues of mutual interest. And many of you know that we have uh, other concerns in regard to this river. So till now, our uh, transborder dialogue was largely limited to hydrological data. So now, under this MOU, the, the nature of the dialogue uh, has widened. Uh, this mechanism would be used to discuss uh, other issues. The fourth was on cultural exchange until 2015, signed by Ambassador Jai Shankar and the Chinese Vice Minister for Culture, Yang Xinjin. The fifth was an MOU on cooperation in road transport and highways, signed by Ambassador Jai Shankar and the Chinese Minister for Transport, Yang Tong. We are launched on quite a major program of road development. Uh, the Chinese have done an extraordinarily good job on road development. So uh, an MOU which gives a framework in which the two governments can exchange views, exchange best practices, look at how people are solving problems here, would be of great help to us as we pursue uh, the infra infrastructure development agenda in the area of roads. The sixth was an MOU on power equipment service centers in India, signed by Ambassador Jai Shankar and the Chinese National Energy Administrator, Wu Xinxiang. This is a very major issue because we have now about 60 plus, 60,000 megawatts plus of Chinese equipment, mostly imported by the Indian private sector for purposes of power development. And one of the issues that has been of concern is that you know, they don't have an adequate capacity to service this equipment. So as a result, if there's a problem, then the interruption in the whole process is very long. So they've actually agreed that they will set up a service center, which is in a way uh, uh, commercially supporting equipment that has already been imported. But from our point of view, it is uh, uh, creating a new institutional mechanism that will deepen the economic cooperation the seventh was a sister city agreement between Delhi and Peking, signed by Ambassador Jai Shankar and the Vice Mayor of Peking, Li Shichiang. The eighth was a sister city relationship between Bengaluru and Chengdu, signed by Ambassador Jai Shankar and the Mayor of Chengdu, Ji Honglin. And the ninth was another sister city relationship between Kolkata and Kunming, signed by Ambassador Jai Shankar and the mayor of Kunming, Li Wenrong. We've uh, constantly been telling the Chinese that you know they have 52% of China now is urban. And I was talking to the minister and he said that actually we think this is an underestimate because it doesn't include some of the people who are in urban areas but maybe without necessary uh, approval. So the percentage of the population in China that is urban is well above 52%. In India, the figure is about 30 or 31. And we're rapidly going to go through the same transition. So the challenges of urbanization are going to be huge. And one of the big issues is that urbanization also has to be sustainable. Nine agreements, three broad areas of cooperation, political and security, trade and economic cooperation, and people to people and cultural exchanges. This is the first time the two countries have signed sister city uh, agreements taking the relationship to a sub-national level. 
The vision statement looks for mutual trust and respect in all aspects of the relationship. And next year is the India-China year of friendly exchanges, marking 60 years of Panchil. Surely, 2.5 billion people matter for global peace, tranquility, and economy.